you are probably aware of it. Google Maps is a perfect database to get leads from small and medium companies. You can easily segment your target market. You have access to reliable data and this data can be globally gathered. However, having access to the data doesn't necessarily mean you can easily retrieve it. To keep it short and simple, scrapping hundreds of leads is pretty different from scrapping tens of thousands of them. It raises the question of, can we do things bigger? Are we able to scrape Google Maps at a larger scale and still get a comprehensive set of data? And how can we do that? In this video, we are going to compare two different approaches. The first one is a kind of do-it-yourself method. We are going to cope on our own. The second one is much simpler. Actually, it's for everyone since no coding skills are required. This approach is named Scrub.io. I will talk about it later on. The link is in the description. Let's begin with the first method, meaning we have to deal with the challenge by ourselves. And the challenge is the following. We are going to scrape a category at a large scale, not at the scale of a city, not at the scale of a country, not at the scale of a state, but at the scale of an entire country. In other words, we will scrape restaurants in the United States. The obvious issue with it is that we cannot directly achieve this result. The first thing we have to do is to retrieve the list of cities and states. And then we will create a kind of loop. For example, we will search for restaurants near New York City. Once it's done, it will be near another city, then the city three, city four, and so on. So it will be a pretty long loop. Fortunately, there is a website in which we can retrieve the list of states and cities. And both are really important. We cannot only scrape the cities because you've got cities with the same name, but in different states. I'm particularly thinking about Springfield, which is pretty known because of this. Here is our starting point, our website. I'm going to use Octopus. I copy this URL and I paste it here. To create a new task, I click on start. In order to make things as precise, as accurate as possible, we are going to insert some formulas. The formulas will be the following, but please note that they might change over time. Let's do the first one together. I turn on the browse mode. I'm going to refuse the cookies. First of all, we are going to create a loop allowing us to select all of our cities. So I click another step, I create a loop, I click on my loop, I switch the loop mode from list of URLs to variable list, and I copy and paste my XPath. We are going to find out how we end up with this XPath in a minute. I copy it, I paste it here, and I click on apply. As you can notice, I've got all my cities. In order to write my XPath, I need to come back to my browser and to take a look at the HTML code. As you can notice, the H2 element is actually the name of the state. To figure that out, I use the XPath helper, which helps me to write my XPath. So it starts with this. Then we select the following sibling, which means this element. And we've got 50 elements, which mean all the cities included within the 50 states. And then I select the li element, which represents all the cities of the list. And here is the result. All right, let's move on. As we have said earlier, we need to select two things. The first one is the name of the city, of course. So I click on add custom field, capture data on the page, and I copy and paste absolutely nothing. I just name my field city. I click on confirm and I should be able to get the list of my cities, then the state. And it's related to this XPath. We just need to add some timeouts. So I click on my loop item and we will wait for five seconds before the action. I click on apply. I think it's over so I can run my task. I click on run and I click on start and mode. I see you back once I've got all my results. The remaining thing to do is to export our data in an Excel or CSV format. And here is what it should look like. The next step 
is to combine both columns in order to create a third column which will be our keywords. Then we will insert all of these keywords to scrape our data. As a result, you might use Excel, but I'm not a huge fan of Excel to manipulate my data. So I'm gonna use the Python Pandas library instead. Make sure that you have created a right environment and that you have imported the Pandas library and the OpenPy Excel library as well. The last one will be helpful to manipulate the Excel data. I'm going to use JupyterLab as a text editor. So I type this line of code on my terminal. You have created a new notebook and you have pasted your Excel file in the same directory as your notebook. To begin with, we import Pandas SPD and we create a new data frame named US. And if we take a look, we've got the correct number of rows and the correct number of columns. We create a new column named keyword, which is a combination of the city, the state, plus the category, plus the country. And we've got our new colon. I'm just going to remove this paste character. Okay, it's slightly better. Finally, I'm going to save my change into a new Excel file, which will be called cities keyword United States. And here is your result. Our first method is about to end. To scrape our data, I'm going to use a template and I'm going to use an Octopus template. I click on templates. I click on maps and I'm going to use store details by keyword Google Maps. I click on try it one more time. I insert my keyword. I'm going to try it out with the first one but if you need to insert multiple keywords you insert them just like this. What about the page size? It sounds like a hundred is a maximum. You give a name to your task, you click on start and you click on start on mode. A few moments later. My task is completed once again and we've got our data rows. But much more important, I've launched the same task with all of my keywords. I have stopped my task, but I succeeded in getting around 70,000 data rows. I'm going to export my data and we're going to take a look about how reliable the data is. It's not over yet. As you can notice, I've got four files instead of one. It's because there are a maximum of 20,000 data rows per Excel or CSV file. In order to make things clearer, I need to merge these four files into a single one. I'm going to use the Python Pandas library one more time. And this time we are going to concatenate our data frames. I've got my four data frames. I use the pd.concat function and I save my change into a new Excel file. I've got my entire file now and I've got 42 columns. But let's take a closer look, shall we? We've got our keyword, the name of the restaurant, the number of reviews, the rating, the address, the country, I assume, the city, the state, the website, the phone number, the opening hours from Monday to Sunday. The silly thing here is that they combine the colon additional info and the opening hours. If you take a look at this data hours, it's identified as woman owned. And then you've got the opening hours. I've got the URL of the Google Maps detail page, the coordinates, the latitude and the longitude, the category up to four image URLs, the description, if there is any, the press range, the current status. I may assume that they wanted to show us whether the restaurant is closed or open, but it doesn't seem that the data has been scraped. I've got the delivery, I've got the open time on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, up to Sunday, and we've got the popular times 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I think the data is related to this graph. However, it raises one question. I wonder whether popular time 0 is related to Monday, popular times 1 to Tuesday, 3 to Wednesday, and so on. Or 
Is it related to the today's date? In that case, it will be different because if we have scraped the data on Friday, we'll get the popular times related to Friday. And I honestly do not know. I do not have an answer to this question. The first method is over. Now we're going to talk about the scrap.io approach. If you remember what we have said at the beginning of the video, we told that scrap.io is a solution for everyone because it's very easy to use. You don't need to download any software. You don't need to write a single line of code and you do not need to build your own scraper, your own crawler. Using the first approach, we have succeeded in getting 44 columns, but with scrap.io, we are getting around 70 columns. But to be more accurate, how reliable the data is and how much data can you expect? I won't lie to you, the example I've just shown you is just a sample. Actually, it seems like there are around 450,000 restaurants in the United States, but one might wonder whether you can get more of them using the first method because we cannot know for sure because I've started my task. But to give you a more accurate answer, we have done the very same test in France. And in that case, we've got 52,000 restaurants using the first method and 139,000 restaurants using scrap.io. It's pretty safe to say that scrap.io will allow you to get more data. To use scrap.io, it's pretty simple. You go to scrap.io and you first need to create your own account. So you click on login and you can sign up now. Once it is done, you have access to your dashboard. If you are not logged yet, you can still get an overview of what you can achieve, of what kind of data you can get. You just need to insert an activity, meaning a category. So we've been talking about a restaurant, haven't we? And you insert a city. Here it's written France. It's because I'm currently located in France. So let's type Paris for the sake of the example. And you click on search. And you've got the number of leads you can expect. But you're gonna ask, you promised we can target leads from an entire country. But yes, you can. I click on my dashboard and here is a place you can extract your lead. You can filter your leads by typing a city, by typing a level two division, which is the county, I believe, the level one division, which is the state and the country. So. If I'm looking for restaurants in the United States, if I click on search, Scrap.io is going to tell me that I've got about 10,000 plus results. Actually, we've got around 450,000 results. But maybe you need something more robust, precise. That is the reason why you can also filter your data. Are you looking for closed restaurants? Maybe not. Are you looking for a restaurant with a website? Are you looking for a restaurant with phone numbers, with email, with social networks? And which ones? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn? Or maybe it doesn't matter to you. Do you want to know whether the restaurant claimed its listing on Google Maps? What about the price range? Because a Burger King restaurant is not the same thing as a three stars restaurant, I guess. What about the rating? It's pretty silly, but it gives you a perfect insight whether the restaurant is good or bad. What about the number of reviews as well? Because you can get a rating of two out of five, but if you've only got one review, maybe it's not relevant. What about the number of pictures? This one can give you an idea of the brand image of the restaurant. What about the content form? on the website. This one is even better than the email because when you send a message through a contact form, you are pretty sure your message will be sent and will be received, which is not necessarily the case when you send an email. What about the pixel on the website? You make your choice and you click on filter. To export your data, you click on, well, export. You can give to your export a name. And if you click on advanced options, you have an overview of all the columns 
you can get. And then you click on export. So if I click on my exports, I can have an overview of all of the exports I have done so far. I just wanted to show you that you can download your files through a CSV or an Excel format. Now let's take a look at our columns. So there are some common fields between the first and the second approach. You've got the name of the restaurants, whether it's closed or not. The main type, so the category. Some over categories, for instance, a hotel can also be a restaurant and a restaurant can also be a Mexican restaurant or a French restaurant. You've got the website, you've got the phone number, of course, the time zone, the full address, which is divided into different subtypes, the street one, the street two, the city, the postal code, the state, the level division one, which is the state as well in our case, the level division two, which is the county, the country, the coordinates, the Google Maps link, the owner's name, the email. I should have said emails because when there is more than one, you also have an access to them. You've got the Facebook link, YouTube link, Twitter link, Instagram link, LinkedIn link, the price range as we have mentioned it earlier, the reviews count, the reviews rating, the reviews per score. In that case, we can see that more than 200 people had an excellent experience within the restaurant. The number of pictures, the URLs of some pictures, the occupancy, the characteristics. And in that case, you've got all of the characteristics, which is related to this part. And then you've got another category. As you can see, you've got some yellow colors and then a kind of orange color, which means that now we have access to SEO fields. Basically, once we have access to the website, we created a crawler, which will help you to have access to more details. So you will have access to the website title, the website keywords, the meta description, the website meta generator, which is the kind of software people have been used for their website. WordPress, Wix.com, the over emails, email two, email three, email four, up to email five. You've got the contact page. I should have said contact pages up to five this time. And the same thing for the social network. The website technologies. This website use Google Analytics. This one use Yoast SEO. What else? We've got a WooCommerce, which is also related to WordPress. And you've got the website Ad Pixel. This is the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you want to get more leads from Google Maps, you can go to scrap.io. And if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments or directly on scrap.io through our customer support. See you next time.